Bala Tinubu will not treat the Igbos badly. Ono counters Reno mockery over allegations that Tinubu's pledge to continuity from Buhari's government meant marginalization of the Southeast. And Senator representing Edo South in the Senate, Rogide, says Tinubu must reconcile and unite Nigerians. This is Plus Politics, and I'm Mary Anakol. President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu's spokesperson in the Southeast, Dr. Joseph Ono, has once more reassured Ndibo that the incoming administration of Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu will not discriminate against any section of Nigeria, let alone the important Southeast geopolitical zone. He said that Tinubu just inherited baggage from the sabotaging cabinet members who intentionally demarketed the all-progressive Congress in the Southeast, hence... When Tinubu emerged as the presidential candidate of the party, huddles were already set for him in the zone. The spokesman was reacting to an interview where the former presidential aide, Mr. Reno Mokri, alleged that Tinubu's pledge of continuity from Buhari's government meant that the Southeast will remain in marginalization. Ono, however, said it was disappointing that everybody in the Southeast had decided to play the ethnicity card and has tried to misconstrue the statement of the president-elect to mean that he will marginalize the Southeasterners. Well, joining us to discuss and break this down is Alphonsus Eba. He is the chairman of the All Progressive Congress in Cross River State and Tintunji Abdulhamid, who is a legal practitioner and a member of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us and good evening. Uh, thank you for having me on. Great. I'm going to start with you, um, Mr. Eber, because you obviously are from the APC. Um, and May 29 is a, a few weeks from now, as uh, many are looking forward to the swearing in of the president-elect and the hurdles that lie um, you know, ahead for him. But let's start by looking at the issue of marginalization. Now, we know that... Um, the Southeast has, had, has been described as one of those um, regions that have gotten the short end of the stick in terms of everything, whether it be infrastructural development, um, you know, good governance. And sometimes you could also add that they've not had some of the best leadership uh, when it comes to those who govern them. But of course, when it comes to um, regionalization and the sharing formula, the Igbos feel that um, they are left out. Hence what we saw under the good luck administration uh, with the rise of IPOP and the likes of Namdi Kanu. With what has happened and transpired during this election that has led up to, you know, the emergence of Bola Met Tinubu, um, do you see uh, the Southeast um, as being embracing towards the president-elect? Neither uh, do you see the president-elect opening his arms to them. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be with you today. I am sure if Nigerians, or particularly the person who made the comment that the Igbos will be marginalized under Asiwaju's administration, understands the meaning of renewed hope, and the person of Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu, in terms of his antecedents, his pedigree and character, he would have known that the Igbos will have a better opportunity, better than the good they have enjoyed under the present situation. And I say so because the president-elect, when he was governor of Lagos State, he brought people from different climes tribes and religious divides to making his cabinet. And he has come in consonance with the biblical provision that said, where there is doubt, let me bring hope. Where there is despair, let me bring faith. The doubt and the despair today can only be renewed with a renewed hope. The southeastern part of Nigeria 
I must say emphatically, alone deserving of having a son or a daughter from that area to govern this country. However, democracy being what it is, people from that area have tried to contest for the presidency of Nigeria. Unfortunately, I'm sure God is reserving their own special time. But the President Ahmed Tinibu is coming for all sections of Nigeria, and they both should have no fear, because his document is truly an accord with Nigerians, and the Southeast will not be an exception. Please right. disregard that thing. Hmm. Let me come to you, um, Tunji. Looking at the voting patterns um, during this just concluded elections, whether it be uh, for the February elections or the March elections, we saw a clear cut, um, you know, voting across uh, ethnic and maybe a teeny weeny um, religious lines, but we saw more divisions across those ethnicities. And with the rhetorics that we saw, especially here in Lagos, with the hate speech that a lot of people, including representatives of the APC Campaign Council here in Lagos, so much so that people were told to go back to their state. And, um, and we also saw some hate speech against the, not just the... Um, uh, other parties, but even a, a particular governorship candidate here in Lagos. Um, and there was nobody speaking up against it until there was immense pressure for the governor to speak up against it. Do you see hope? Or what hope do you think the future holds in terms of um, trying to blur those lines that have already been continuously expanded um, by hate and ethnicity? Unfortunately, it's going to be difficult for us to come back together as one in terms of... Uh, uh, where we come from, because uh, the last election, what happened clearly cannot be erased because people will not forget. You can only, for, you can, you can only forgive, but you can't forget. So, uh, the, the what happened, particularly in Lagos State, regarding uh, uh, you are from this place, you are not from this place, you cannot vote because you are not here from here or whatever, people will still have it in mind and they will still carry it along, no matter what. But the, the, the only thing that can advocate that is for the incoming government to, to not to make that, uh, manifest that particular uh, uh, agenda in, in terms of uh, the way a manner his it, it, appointment will, will be done. Because if uh, the appointment is caught, uh, caught across in the region, and uh, with notwithstanding uh, uh, where you come from or where you belong to, then that, that may raise some of the, the, the mind, that what is in the mind of some of the people uh, that have been uh, uh, seen to have uh, been uh, offended by that uh, by what happened in, in, in the last election. Because uh, truly, just like you said, the last election was majorly based on the uh, ethnic uh, sentiments. Yoruba, Igbo, Aousa, and uh, all those things. And uh, in, in fact, in Lagos State, in, towards uh, the, the governorship election, it, it, clearly, it was manifested clearly. Because they, they made it clearly uh, a, a point of, uh, if you're not an Igbo, if you're not voting for uh, a, a, a PPC, and you're an Igbo man, you cannot vote. Uh, those areas were there. We saw it on video. We saw it everywhere. People were. It, it's not a matter of a conjunction or, or allegation or just assumption. It happened. We saw it. So, like I said, the only way that can be not that will, that will raise is is for the incoming government uh, of Azuwa uh, Development to ensure that everybody, every region is carried along in mm. terms of uh, not just appointment, quality appointments given to every region. Not like what we saw in this current uh, regime. We are by certain section of the of, of, of the country take over all the area, certain uh, duty area, what we call duty area uh, 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 of, of the government, uh, ministries and departments. I, I think, uh, but uh, unfortunately, the 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 transitional committee set up by 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 this uh, at uh, administration, uh, the government, incoming government, uh, leave much to be desired because uh, it's apparently. No, no, uh, no, no. Ibo was uh, included in that uh, committee, which raised an issue for people. People now see it as uh, maybe it was deliberate because they didn't give much vote to him. We all saw what he uh, got in that. I'm not sure he got uh, 25 percent in any of, any of the southeast. And then probably people are thinking because of that, he's trying to punish them for for that. But there are few that I know may not want to punish them for that. Now, if I thought they will be, they will be punished, that may be second time because I do actually as it is today, the appointment that will be done now. Based on 2027 uh, uh, election, people are already planning for 2027, and I see actually also planning for 2027 in that in that regard. So I, I don't expect him to throw that line of uh, 
ethnic uh, sentiment in disappointment in this. Uh, in this uh, and when you use the word punishment, because I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, why would the word punishment even come to play? Um, Asiwaju Bola met Tinubu was not running to be president of the South South or the Southwest. He ran to be president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, inclusive of every region across the country, whether they voted for him or not. And this reminds me of, of you know, um, something similar that happened when President um, Muhammad Buhari was coming into office and certain sentiments that were, uh, you know, um, displayed in some of his comments that made people wonder um, if, you know, the Southeast was going to um, be at a loss of sorts under his administration. And we've seen how that has gone. Uh, but when you say punishment, I don't know if it sits well with me. Why would anybody want to punish a group of people for not voting for him? You have to pardon me for that adjective. That is the adjective that, that comes from my head at that time. So what I mean by punishment is that, look, when you want to share positions that you now look at people and say, okay, well, you people from this area, you gave me social number of votes. You people from this area, you gave me social number of votes. You people from this area, you gave me social number of votes. So in, in, in sharing that, those, those responsibilities and positions, some other people will be more considered than the other, based on what they brought to, to, to the table. You, you see, now you are, you, you, that, that is even manifesting. We are talking about the Senate presidency and the House of Rep presidency. That, that is, you put it into concentration. Some of the, some of the issues being used against some of those uh, people in the Southeast is because they think they were saying, what did they brought to the table? What number of what they brought? To? So, so that, that's what I mean by punishment. Punishment, I mean that is just relatively in terms of uh, appointment, in terms of not giving them proper uh, uh, whatever. I agree with you. Once you are a president of the country, you will become the president of everybody. So whether or not I vote for you or do, I don't vote for you, and you have the whole responsibility to be fair to every, every, everybody. And, like, and, that's, and that's why I say that, look, I see that happening in this uh, 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 first four years. It may likely happen because the people are looking at second time. And then when you're looking at second time, you have to do everything to please everybody so that you'll be able to, to have your way easily in 2027. So I, 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 if you look at what, uh, like what, what people are saying and what he, he even said during the campaign, I remember when uh, it was in Nelugu or so, I can't remember the actual state. When he said, uh, it, the, do you know that what you bring is what you get? He said that. I, I, I heard that. And then you can see when this composition is, is coming up now, the committee and whatever, the transfer committee, no ego or, or, or was included, which mm. made people to raise issues as to whether or not he okay. wants to align with the statement at that, at that time. We're forgetting also, and also bear in mind that he also said he wants to continue from where the president, uh, current president stopped. The current president said it that time. I will, deal, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will take care of those who gave me 25 percent before coming to you who gave those who gave you cost 25 percent. So people are now saying, look, if you are looking at that statement, it may likely, if you want to follow the trend of that of the former president, it may likely go the same way of the uh, former president who would decide to say, look, since okay. you did not give me, uh, you gave me little little votes, I also give, give you little appointments. And All that's right. what people are saying. Let me come back to Alphonse. Alphonse. Um, what exactly do you think that the president-elect meant by saying, um, that he would continue from where his predecessor stopped because, of course, many people have not necessarily given President Buhari a pass mark in terms of governance, in terms of how he's dealt with the ethnic um, divisions that we've had. We've seen a lot of problems, you know, um, emanate from the southeast. And can you say wholeheartedly that President Buhari has handled that issue um, in the southeast pretty well? And if your president-elect is saying that He's going to start or continue from where the president stopped. Uh, what exactly do you think he meant? You know, before I answer that question, let me just say uh, a little bit, educate my colleague on the other side. You need to go and take a proper look at the list of the transition committee and check the origin of some members of that committee. It is not for me to start mentioning names here for some very good reason. But I have one person at least that is evil by birth. So please, just to make a corrigendum to that. Then two, um, I understand the psyche of my brothers in PDP. I, I was there before. But please do not wear a morning gown that is deeper than the indigo of a bereaved. Allow the Igbos themselves to complain. Because I have a very good relationship with my Igbo brothers and sisters. And so far, so good. They are very confident and comfortable with the arrangements so far and they know that they'll have a place of pride in Tinibu's administration. Yeah, but that's straight to your question. And quickly also, 
Yes, it is true that when President Buhari came on board, he talked about the 5 percent, 90 something percent. You will see that the 97 5 percent President Buhari talked about. In mathematical calculation, 5 and 97 does not even give you 100. It was only a banter. And let me tell you how far that joke was taken to. Today, the second Niger Bridge, one of the most ambitious projects ever undertaken by President Buhari in this country. That project is nowhere in the South-South. It's not in the South-West. It's not in anywhere in the North Central. It is in the Southeast region. If you put 5% equation that he joked about that first time, you would know that if that was to be taken into consideration, that bridge wouldn't have been done. And so many other things in terms of juicy appointments. Please, let us just be focused and be positive towards the future and leave what is behind us. Because only God brought President Asiwa Jokola Metinibu. And like I started by saying, just go to his and go by his antecedents. And you will know how he brought the Igbos. He brought the houses. He brought the jaws. He brought people from different ethnic and religious backgrounds to put in his cabinet. That is the man we are talking about. Mm. And the word renewed hope. It is not just a statement that you make. It has some very strong divinity. And I want you to take a look again at it from the book of Corinthians in the Bible, and you will see what that hope represents that is being renewed. So when Asiwaju, our president-elect, said he wants to continue from where President Buhari stopped, there are a whole lot of issues, like you have noted. The issue of insecurity in the Southeast has not been properly, completely, and conclusively dealt with. He will take it off from that angle. He needs peace to develop the Southeast region. He will sit and dialogue with the people. But if, and he will take if, it to his logical If antecedents is in anything... In terms of infrastructure... If, if, I'm so sorry, I'm so, so, I'm so sorry, Mr. Can, can you can I just, just talk, can I just come in? If antecedents is something yeah. that we must go by, how come when we were having this issue of if you're not Igbo, if you're not, uh, sorry, if you're not voting for um, Asiwaju, if you're Igbo, if you're this person, you're not going to be allowed to vote here, why didn't he speak up? Why didn't we hear directly from the president-elect? Because you that, see, hold that, on, hold on, hold on. I'm that, not there yet. Just hold on. Because you see, the thing is, right. silence is only golden when it has to be. But when you know that things like this can lead to a, a bigger problem, it's best to speak up on it. But we did not hear the, the president-elect speak at the time when we needed to hear him speak so that the people will come together. But there was, there was radio silence. So if, if it's antecedents we must go by, then of course people also need to take into consideration what happened before, during, and after the election. So again, should we also take into consideration the fact that he might keep quiet while the Southeast is boiling? That allegations remain phantasmagorias. You don't react to what does not exist. They are mere what do you mean by it does not exist? It did no happen. Proof. It did happen. And we all no, saw no, no, no. it. Anyway, we have videos. We have factual on, evidence. On. It hold did on. happen. Or are we going to say it did not happen? Time. Hold on. Hold on, my dear sister. You spent your better time in the studio. So you would not know... Oh, what I was in the, the field. field. Oh, I, I'd, I like to correct field. You. I'd like to correct you. I was in the field, just so you know. Here in oh, the field. We saw it clearly on TV. I am sure later... Later, you will tell me who are those persons that made those allegations so that we can take on them. But I condemn that in totality. Isn't that meant If that was made, but I'm sure if they were ever made to the knowledge of our president elect, you would have condemned it because he's not a man that is known for tolerating what is not good. You recall the last time I was here with you on this station, on the 2nd or 3rd of uh, February, there was serious situation in this country. The issue of uh, redesigning of the Naira note, the issue of uh, petrol subsidy and the issue of uh, fuel fuel, which were biting seriously in this country. President Asiwaju came out to speak against it. I was your guest on the station, if you recall then. So, you must take a man for what he is known for. A very courageous man. A man who will take on what is wrong and condemn without minding who's also Why gone. didn't he condemn this? That that he is a totally detribalized Nigerian. And if there was any such thing brought to his attention, he would have condemned it. 
That is the best I can say to that. So you're telling me so that the person who was running to be president of this country, who had a situation room spread across this country, did not know about this. He flew all under his radar, and he so that's why he did not condemn it. And and so as Nigerians, you, 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 and those you heard, we did not hear. We did not hear. Interesting. When, when so, you so, about what so, so, so should we take it that there are lots of things that are also going to continue to take the president by shock when he becomes president, just like President Muhammad Buhari? Mr. Chairman, the question is for you. Can you hear me? Mr. Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? I, I think that we have lost that connection, but we're going to try to get the chairman back. Tunji, let me come back to you. Um, Reno Mockery is, is mostly talking about the fact that, of course, we know that Reno is representing um, your political party, and obviously um, your party still has a grouse with the fact that they don't believe that the president-elect won this election, but of course he clearly was announced by INEC. Uh, as the winner of this election and will be sworn in come May uh, 29. But again, looking at the issue of, like what the chairman said, that the president was not aware he would have flagged it. But you, you, you obviously live in Lagos. You know what happened on election day and all of the things that, you know, happened. He's saying that the president has had a great antecedent. I mean, look at his uh, time as a governor. He's saying that there were many people who made up his cabinet that were non Negotiations that were also Igbos. I mean, we've also seen that under the Fashola administration with the likes of Joe Igboke, uh, Igboke, I beg your pardon. Um, can we trust that this administration would right all the wrongs of the Buhari administration, irrespective of all the promises that the Buhari administration made? Say anything about that because I have not even started, I have not even seen his cabinet, I don't even know who and who is bringing on board. And from the point of from the look of things, it is still going to be the same, same set of people that, were, that I already know. People who are already in the system. Those who have been who are in PDP for 16 years, who destroyed PDP, who have moved to APC, and they're now in APC, are the same set of people that it's going to be using. The people who are who are who are who are who are, who are, who are, who they are marketing are the same people. And I will not be surprised if the president uh, elect is not aware of what happened in Lagos, because he said he will continue from where the, where the current president stopped. The current president is always not aware of what is going on. So if he's, if he's continued the legacy of the of the of the of the, of the former president uh, of the uh, current president, so it won't be surprising to me. Not for if he say he's not going to be, he's not aware. It's exactly on things that is not favor them or that favors them. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, it is not it's not a strange thing for me but that he is not aware of uh, the, the man the, the, the chairman is saying that uh, he is not aware of what happened in Lagos. It's, it, it's a, it's, it, that is the pattern of politicians when things, when things favors them. They, they fake ignorance of that of those, of those things. When they people them, they, they become aware of those things. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, like I said, it's too early for me to be able to predict whether or not he's going to do he's going to do he's going to write any any wrong until until the cabinet is formed, until we see who and who is bringing on board, until we know who and who is under particular in this position or that position, to be able yeah. to say okay, well, based on what here we see, these people may likely bring something better on board. Tunji, I want to take you on, on, you know, the issue of PDP and APC. I mean, there are lots of people who would ask today what the difference between PDP and APC is, because you just made that allegation that, oh, you know, these guys crisscross. But that's the order of the day in Nigeria, especially between the PDP and the APC. They're strange bedfellows, but they all run in the same circle. And before the end of the year, we'll see more movements between your parties. So can you really say that you're better than those in the APC, or are you all not just the same? Those who destroy AP, APDP are now in APC. You can, I can name so many, so many of them. But that, that, so that's the same thing that the APC can say about the PDP. What do you say? But that's almost the same thing the APC will say about the PDP. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. Because uh, they, they, some of them are in, the, in PDP for 16 years, and they will come out after 16 years and say PDP destroyed the country. Who are those who destroyed the country? Who are those in the APC at that time? I know uh, it's, uh, the former Minister of Transport was in the APC, I was in PDP for over 16 years. They are the president of Aqua and governor of Aqua, a former governor of Aqua does it. He was in the APDP for so many of them, Ojin Sokalu and so many. They were all in PDP when they were in, in, in government. And today they will be complaining about PDP destroying the country. So if you are saying PDP destroying the country, they are literally saying they destroyed the company, uh, the country. And that's, that's what we're saying. And these are the same set of people 
that will still come on board to say they want to become minister or want to become a senior president or want to become this and that. And you are expecting different results. You can't continue to do the same thing the same way and expect different results. I don't have any... Uh, okay. uh, I won't be surprised if, if nothing uh, uh, positive uh, in terms of uh, development uh, 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 comes out of this uh, uh, okay. government. I know one thing that, that is sure that will be done, that will be proper politics. Okay. The, it actually knows how to play the politics. And okay. it's already preparing for 2010. All that's, right. why, that, that's why it's advancing with some of the PDP, who, those who destroy the PDP, those who are in PDP okay. and who destroy the PDP for All their right. personal interest, it's advancing with them now. All right, uh, finally, uh, Mr. Afonso Zeba, would you like to quickly uh, assure Nigerians of what to expect after May 29, quickly? Mr. Eba, can you hear me? Oh, I think that we lost that connection. Well, we want to say thank you. Alfonso Zeba is the chairman of the All Progressive Congress in Cross River State. And Tunji Abdulhamid is a legal practitioner and a member of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Um, up next, we take our attention to the calls for reconciliation by the president-elect after May 29. Stay with us.